Out of May 6, one of the interesting things that the SEC has implemented are circuit breakers on markets. Basically, when the market's gone crazy, um, let's stop it and you know refresh the liquidity. Uh, one of the interesting new topics that, that we're starting to be discussed is not necessarily a stop, but a slowdown. Basically, a yellow flag, something to slow the market down. With me to discuss that is David Lineweber. David. Uh, is the author of Nerds on Wall Street, an intriguing look on how financial technology has changed the markets. And uh, we're here really to, and he's just authored um, an article in the Journal of Portfolio Management uh, titled Avoiding a Billion Dollar Financial uh, Technology Rat Hole, talking really about the SEC audit trail. So one of the things that you bring up here that's actually really interesting is this whole idea of, you know, is the SEC going to waste four billion dollars or, or and two to billion dollars a year developing um, a uh, consolidated audit trail? And what should we be looking for from a consolidated audit trail? So why don't you start? You know, what's your thoughts on on this whole audit trail issue? And, and do we really need real time? Do we not need real time um, uh, on the audit trail? If you had asked me that question about six months ago, I would have said no. I said, I said no, we don't need real time. Uh, better than five months would be good. Um, it would be nice to be able to know what happened, you know, overnight. Yeah, the whole, the whole issue of uh, and the SEC taking five months to determine what happened in the flash crash is kind of absurd. It, it really shows the inadequacy mm. of, of the current systems. I mean, the history of this stuff. When you look at the, their request for um, comments on, on, on the cats, the, it's, a, it's 230 pages, written by lawyers, has not a single picture or table in it. Mm -hmm. But if you read the first uh, group of pages, it's a sad history of lawsuits and people being dragged into court and, and incompatible, inadequate systems. And it's similar to what scientific computing was like, say, 15, 15 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, if astronomers wanted to know, if there was a flash in the sky and astronomers wanted to know what it looked like in microwave and ultraviolet and infrared uh, from orbital platforms, they had to go through all this incompatible data retrieval that we see now. But they've solved those problems. And I was asked to come to Lawrence Berkeley Labs, um, really as a very part-time role, to help bring sort of some of the methods that scientific supercomputing has has used successfully in other fields into finance. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was the, the origin of, uh, of this article. Mm -hmm. Now the issue is, you know, do you think the SEC really needs real-time um, data or, or you know, it should, should we really be pursuing? And, and what, what do you think the SEC is going to do with real-time data? Do they, do they, or are, is the idea to say, oh, I see an, ad, a, a, an aberrant trade, let's stop the market? Or, or? Well, I think that at first, I was, that was totally where I was. What would they do with it? But especially since the, the, this editorial appeared, uh, it was a front page of the, I think, the spring issue of, of JPM, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have gotten in touch with us, uh, people from the buy side, from some very large buy side firms, people from some HFT firms, and they've changed my mind mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, one, one uh, person described the current approach as trying to apply the rules of the road to aircraft. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you're, you're asking for trouble. And that these sudden stops can be destabilizing. Okay. That um, if you could monitor, and really, so who's going to do it? You know, the SEC is sort of the natural uh, player there. Right. Or FINRA um, or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, to, to be able to say, Things are getting a little intense. Let's slow down. Let the algos trade out. Let the algos stabilize themselves. Um, some of what goes on, I think, in our, in our complex markets are um, delay effects. Computer systems have a capacity. Mm -hmm. And uh, with everybody trading faster and faster and faster, really by the day, um, you the, the the input gets ahead of the ability to process it, and these cues build up. So it begins to look like a denial of service attack. So and you have all these messages really flooding a computer. And you have inaccurate time stamps, you have incompatible uh, nonsense, nonsensical mm -hmm. um, conditions occur. And if you could just slow down 
you know, put out the yellow flag for the NASCAR fans, the yellow mm -hmm. card for the, the soccer, soccer people. Mm -hmm. um, it, it makes a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like a brownout. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one way of dealing with electric power crises would be to just flip every, flip the switches. Mm -hmm. But you know, we don't do that. We don't just turn everybody's <laughs> air conditioner off <laughs> right. when it's 100 degrees in Texas, you know. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, so let's talk about this a little more. So, so all of a sudden we start getting massive amounts of data coming in. Um, SEC has uh, this FCAT, you know, starts monitoring it on a real-time basis, uh, start getting a, uh, an overflow condition, queues start building up, and then all of a sudden we wind up saying, okay, hey guys, slow down. Um, and so that basically, you know, we, it, it, how, how would that work? Would we, we just kind of um, all of a sudden say, you know, you need to keep your, you know, message in the, in the queue for, for your, your order in the market for a period of time? Or does all of a sudden say you can't just, you can't just flood the market with quotes? You, you, how, do, how, do, how do you think that would work? And, and how would the mechanics of that be? I think rather than designing it right here mm -hmm. in our little interview, be able to test some of these ideas. Mm -hmm. there, there are a lot of ideas in big computational science mm -hmm. that have been fabulously successful in many fields. Mm -hmm. um, Simulation, right, uh, is one of them, and and one we of don't. Have, we we've talked a lot about yeah. actually in offline is is you know creating simulation capabilities, especially with the computing power of Lawrence Berkeley, trying to put some of these massive super supercomputers. You know, can they handle that kind of data? They can handle it without breaking a sweat. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference in capacity between what people are talking about for financial markets, and Mary Shapiro talked about 20 terabytes a day, mm -hmm. and what people do routinely in the scientific world is factors of 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. Oh, okay, uh, so, so the, are complaining at, about a million me messages a second or whatever? It's is nothing, nothing. It's nothing? Oh, okay. Uh, um, something, uh -oh. like, something like the, the, the Large Hadron Collider mm -hmm. uh, uh, produces petabytes in, wow. in milliseconds. Hmm. And so it, it can all, all be collected. Um, the Earth-looking sensors, and this is, uh, the, the Large Hadron Collider is sort of in one place. The Earth-looking sensors, there's lots of them. Right. You know, they're, they're on satellites, they're, they're on the ground, they're, they're on balloons, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're all over the place. And now they're integrated. Um, for, for the technically inclined, there's a computer scientist named Jim Gray. Mm -hmm. uh, who won the Turing Award and really kind of brought order out of the chaos. There's, there's a, uh, more about him in this, this, this little editorial. Mm -hmm. um, in, 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 in the big data sciences, he won a Turing Award, which is sort of like the Nobel Prize in computer science. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was the guy people may remember was lost at sea in his sailboat in oh San yeah. Francisco uh -huh. Bay and Google and Microsoft and really the entire computing community um, got involved in, in ex one of the most uh, information intensive search efforts uh, ever, hmm. uh, which unfortunately didn't succeed. Mm -hmm. and, and, and some of Gray's ideas uh, are, are applicable here. And, and I, I think getting the, the, the two groups to talk is, is, is a lot of the people at, at, the, at the computing research area and LBL really didn't know much about finance mm -hmm. uh, and hadn't touched financial data. And that was why uh, the, the co-founder of, of the center, Horst Simon, uh, mm -hmm. is then, uh, now deputy director of the lab, he was then head of computer research, said, let's get these people talking. And we've actually had that effect. Uh, Interesting. We've heard from um, people at the SEC. Uh, we've heard from HFT people. We've heard from buy side people. And a lot of them are going, yeah, this is a, a pretty good idea. I mean, you know, think if you, if you when you were driving your car, if all you could do was slam on the brakes, right? You mm -hmm. know, how 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 long would your how long would you and your car last? And uh, I think we're going to continue to see instabilities in markets, and it's not a good thing for the country. I mean, when people, you know, it, it arguably Absolutely. it's happening now. Mm -hmm. So, and and Lawrence Berkeley Lab is a it's a dot gov. You know, mm -hmm. we're we're part of the national laboratory system. Um, you know, they have a you know quite a uh, an amazing history. 
going back to the early days of, of, of the atomic age. And now it's a, it's a civilian thing. They, they apply these methods to, to climate, to seismic problems, to, to all sorts of physics, to really doing complicated things um, that you would have a hard time doing um, in a lab. You know, simulating things, artificial <laughs> photosynthesis. So, right? so um, you know, we, we tend to think of, of the markets, and the markets are, you know, a series of independent actors, some of which are, you know, me or you sitting at uh, online, you know, putting in our 100 and 200 mm -hmm. shares. Some of them are, by themselves, supercomputers trying to analyze the market and, and put out, you know, thousands of quotes a second. Um, you know, could we model something like that, you know, with different actors, with different algorithms with different models, um, you know, is that, is, that, is that something that's within the realm of possibility? Yes, in, mm -hmm. in, in a word. Modeling every single retail trader, mm, it's going to be a stretch and I'm not sure if you need to do it, but you can model uh, fairly complex entities hmm. um, very accurately. And, uh, you know, th this, this goes on in, in, in many fields of, of science and engineering. And uh, I, there's really no reason to believe that uh, financial markets are different uh, pr I in, in their ability to be market, to be modeled. They're a little different in that the rules change mm -hmm. somewhat. I mean, you know, Newton's law is Newton's law. And, right. Uh, but. I think when you're talking about, really we're talking about computer systems here. Right, right, right. And they can certainly be modeled. Uh, any kind of engineering entity, even in, in, in difficult environments, can be modeled. NASA. Right. You know, when they, I they have... If, yeah, I guess we're going to go model, uh, you know, the effects of, you know, a space shot going to the moon and, you know, being off a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a degree puts you on Mars instead of the moon. I guess, uh, I guess there are things you can do. That's the physics, but even yeah. modeling the engineering part of it, mm -hmm. modeling the cues, modeling the delays, modeling the information flows is, is easily within reach of, of current technology. Well, with that, I think we'll cut it there. Uh, with me, David Lineweber, um, uh, uh, President of Lineweber & Co., adjunct are you an adjunct? Uh, are you? I, what am I? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm a computer scientist. Uh, I'm, at, a, I'm a computer scientist at Lawrence at Berkeley. At Lawrence Lab. Berkeley. Uh, and author of Nerds on Wall Street. And with that, I'm Larry Tab, founder and CEO of Tab Group. And thanks for joining. Thank you.